recall. Total Recall is sandwiched between two lots of boxing. Our first bout begins now. The Dark Destroyer, Nigel Benn, faces Gerald McClellan. Good shape. I mean, I'm ready. I don't care whatever he wants to throw at me, I will match him. I had more knockouts than he'd had fights, so I'm not going to lose no sleep over it. <laughs> Boxing, without a doubt, he can't box. Uh, he's a hard puncher, but he's a wild hard puncher. You know what I mean? Um, so he can't shock. What are you gonna shock me with? He would shock me if he come to fight me. He would shock me. I'm very confident. I never usually predict a round, but I, like I said, between six and eight. ITV Sport welcomes you all to the arena in London Docklands. Britain's Nigel Benn has to produce the performance of his life to retain his title. There's enormous interest in this one. The touts are operating outside, and inside it is just about packed. Hello, good evening to all. This time last week, we saw the return of Frank Bruno. It was brief and very unsatisfactory, more of a mugging than a fight. Well, boxing can make a complete idiot of anyone who's brave enough to make a prediction, but I feel absolutely sure we're in for something very special in the next hour. Barry McGuigan's with me as always. Barry, welcome. Do you agree with that? Oh, um, absolutely. This is one of the most eagerly anticipated fights on both sides of the Atlantic for many, many years. It's going to be absolutely dynamite when it lasts. Last week, when we were chatting down there in the West Country, you said McClellan. Do you, do you go along with that now? Well, Nigel Benn is a tremendous puncher, and he's always in there with a chance. But I went to see McClellan work out in the Peacock gym, and he just looks awesome. And no matter what we have taken this fight, apart and dissect it and put it back together again. I only see one winner and unfortunately I don't think it's going to be Nigel Benn. Mind you, Nigel Benn, I mean, I, I've watched him all his career, so have you. He always gives value for money well, and he, he always blasts away, particularly when nobody expects him to. Exactly. He thrives on the occasion. He, he said no fear is written on his, on his hat and he really thrives on a, a night like this where he's expected to lose. Loves to be the dark horse and he, there's no doubt he's got a tremendous punch and he's in there with a chance. Barry, just finally, you'll be keeping your scorecard as all Always, I don't think it's going to be needed. I don't think so. I think this fight will be over in three rounds. OK. Right, let's go down to ringside. Check what's happening there with Gary Newborn. Well, Jim, I think, first of all, we should look at the basic WBC rules for this fight because it's going to be explosive. We know that. So let's have a look at the main points. No three knockdown rule. That means that if a boxer, the same boxer's down three times, as long as he beats the count, the fight goes on. It's not stopped. No standing count, and the bell saves only in the last round. Those are the basic rules. With me, Frank Warren and the joint promoter, Don King. Frank, first of all, the newspapers are saying this is going to be the fight of the decade. One thing's for sure, it's not going to last the distance. No, it's an explosive fight. Both guys carry bombs in their gloves and do not blink because you're going to see plenty of action. What do you think is going to happen? The betting, very heavy betting is on, on I, the early rounds. I honestly think the first one who lands with a punch, somebody's going to go. And, and, you know, and I don't think Nigel Benn, for one minute, is a 5-2 is a, a, a to two against underdog but McClellan is that five to two favorite yeah he's a good puncher he's won his on. last three fights by a knockout as we all know but you know that's the, all the boxing he's had in the in the last year you know I think Nigel Benn's going to show something tonight the fight of the decade in, in Great Britain yes it is it's going to be a sensational fight and the British deserve their best and that's why Frank Warren and I joined together with ITV and the voice of ITV Gary Newborn to bring you the best in boxing and you're going to see some explosive activity here tonight and I predict that Gerald McQuillan is a miniature Mike Tyson. Now, what they're depending on in the bin camp 
is that maybe the inexperience and not knowing being a title holder, but he's a title holder too. He just gave up one. So it's going to be an exciting evening of Fisted Cups here on ITV. Don't even go to the refrigerator to get a Kool-Aid or a beer. Stand right there and watch this in its entirety. Jake, make your breaks with the breaks that come on between the rounds because you can't afford to miss this. It's going to be great, Gary. Okay, it's going to be a good fight, isn't it? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Okay, well, there's been a lot of betting on this fight, and to get up uh, to date with it all, a man who even is in the shadow when it comes to words of Don King. John McCrick, what's happening? It isn't only Nigel Benn who faces an early knockout. Bookies, too, will be flattened if they reckon that McClellan is an absolute certainty at 3-1 to one on. They're going McClellan to win. That's the best price you can get to win in early rounds. Of course, most people expect with 3-1 to one against Benn and 50-1 to one the draw. And for McClellan to win on points, well, that's 9-1. to one. It's 11-1 to one Benn. But the Fleet Street hacks are convinced the judges' scorecards will not be needed. In the time Sir Kruma Sen believes Benn will go in the sixth, that's 12 to 1. The Mirrors Ian Gibb goes for the fifth at 9 to 1. The Express, Star, and Colin Hart in the Sun say no longer than the third, 13 to 2. Just two rounds, according to the Independence, Ken Jones, and the Daily Mail. While John Rodder and The Guardian and today's Mike Walters reckon the Yank will knock the chimes out of Big Ben inside three minutes. But in racing, whenever the hacks agree on anything, they're invariably wrong. So I go along with the crowd here and take Ben at 3 to 1 to win for Britain. Britain. But it's going to be a primitive dogfight here on the Isle of Dogs. Will McClellan prove to be a savage, snarling pit bull or merely a poodle? Yelp! <laughs> I'll tell you what, you call him a poodle and I'll be right behind you, John. Thank you, JR. <laughs> right, then, well, let's just shake, take a look, shall we, at the tail of the tape, shall we? Ben, 31 years of age, four years older. That uh, height advantage that McKellen has could be absolutely crucial. Six foot compared to Ben, five, nine and a half. Ben, though, smack on the 12 stone limit. McClellan surprisingly light at 11.11. Those were yesterday's weights, though. I'm sure McClellan will have made up a bit of weight since then. How are they looking in the dressing rooms? Gerald McClellan outside the ring. He says, I'm a nice guy. Inside, I'm like an animal. It's scary feeling the confidence I have when I leave the dressing room, the mandatory challenger. Meantime, the champion, Nigel Benn, he says, I fought guys who put the fear of God in me. I always put on my best performance against them. Ben and McClellan will be blasting off in a couple of minutes. The arena in London Docklands. Over 10,000 people inside waiting to see if Nigel Benn can upset all the punters, all the odds, and successfully defend against the mandatory challenger, the lethal hitter Gerald McClellan. Frank Bruno outside the ropes this week. Let's join your MC for this evening, the distinctive Jimmy Lennon Jr. into the arena, the challenger, but the red-hot favourite. I haven't seen him crack a smile since he arrived here, Gerald McClellan. Moving up to super middleweight, when he was middleweight champion, he disposed of all challengers very quickly. There's no way Ben can outbox me, he says. Why stand there for 12? but I can get it done in one. The G-Man.
magnificent reception for the champion. Tyson and the Hagler, Ben says he's never ducked anybody. He's promised to be the old dark destroyer tonight. At 31, he knows there aren't many nights like this ahead of him if he loses. He's met the best and come through, and he has promised to shock everybody tonight. A terrific reception from Nigel Benn. Formalities are very nearly over. There's a real buzz about this place at the moment. Let's get back to Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance, boxing fans joining us across the UK on the ITV Sports Network and sports fans joining us around. Thank you. 
Introducing to you the referee in charge of this main event. He will be giving instructions after the introductions. Alfred Azzaro. People's champion, okay. Can he do it? Let's join our commentators, Jim Watt, and first of all, say good evening to Reg okay. Guthridge. Well, hello there. Pull up a ringside seat with us, and uh, well, to beat an old cliche to death, these two have the old equaliser 33 first round wins. Now, you've been warned by Frank Warren and Don King, as we did last week uh, with Frank Bruno, but uh, his opponent, well, he couldn't stand up in a 15 mile an hour win, really. These two have had 16 title fights can take it and dish it out. Ben, tremendous reception he's had here tonight, and he caged around like a, a lion there, roaring to get out. He really did. He's really fired up for this one, and he will need to be, because this is some puncher. McClellan looking for him straight away, Reg, right from the opening bell, he's looking for the finisher. He's ducking very low, Jim, below the, the waistline, and as he looks as though he's done him in the opening round, and we thought this might happen. That was why the odds were so big. Is he going to climb back? You can usually get a bit longer to get back from uh, the canvas, more than 10, and he's going to. What a sensational start. We didn't expect Ben to go over this quickly, and I couldn't understand why he was propping himself on the ropes, a bit like wet laundry there for a second or two. This man is absolutely tremendous puncher. He's got to throw punches back now, Ben, to hang in there. Count, Reg. He should take another count until his head clears. Get back onto the one knee, try and get that head clear. His legs are completely gone. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not defending, he's not attacking. He must take another count, get his head clear. See, he's technically ducking below the, the waistline, which he's not allowed, but does it matter? I don't blame him. I try and jump on this fellow's back. But what he's doing now, that's the only way he can, is to claim him. The French referee is pushing McClellan off, which won't please him too much. The French referee has been very kind to Ben in this first round. He's given him a conveniently long count when he was out of the ring. He's trying to keep McClellan off, but this man will not be denied. Ben, badly shaken. He's supposed to be at the most dangerous when he's wounded, Ben. He's proved that in the past, but uh, this fellow's a little bit higher class than some of the... See, hey, well, Jim, he's almost falling over as he turned See, away from the referee. Ben there. is not dangerous here, Rez, because he's so badly stunned, he can't get any leverage into his counter punches. See, nothing in that punch. Off balance, his body weight is bad. That was a better shot. And McClellan just takes it and comes back. He's not generally known to the 
public at large, McClellan, but the bookmakers knew, didn't they? They bet, they bet from the head, not the heart. Again, the referee been a little bit kind yeah. to Ben here, it's as though he's trying to help him survive this round. Ben has to come back with something. Has to get his body weight forward and try and get some leverage into the punch. He's backed up in the ropes, no power. This man is just remarkable, these first round wins he keeps having. Ben saying, well, I've beaten better men than he has. And, and he could well do it. It looks Jim as though he might have just ridden the storm. Still shaky, Reg. This kind of punishment takes some time to clear out of your head. They come back with a good shot and actually made McClellan back off there. That first punch that came was really the small stone of a, of a landslide from McClellan. He's doing the right thing now, keep close. That's it, he survived the round anyway. So all bets off on the first round decision. That was what the bookmakers were worried about. I frankly couldn't care less about them. I'm more concerned about them. And he's, they brought in Danny Mancini here, who's very experienced in the corner, to help out with the manager, Peter De Freitas, and trainer this Kevin Sanders here. Let's have a little nick under that right eye, Jim, that, that Mancini, the cut man, as they call him, in the game, is taking care of. That was some round, wasn't it? Totally one-sided, mind you. I mean, Ben Jim only got a couple of punches in, really. The only thing Ben got a chance to display at Reds was his tremendous fighting heart, staying in there when many fighters would have gone out and stayed out. But the punches, thankfully, weren't landing cleanly on the chin. There were stunning punches to the top and to the side of the head but not punches on the chin. If those punches have been on the chin, they find would be over already. Ben out the ring here, so he's entitled to a bit more time to get back in again. And he wasn't pushed round back in, two. that's against the rule, but I think they've parked the rules at the front gate by the look of it. Round two. Now, can he get that dizziness out? These eyes were in separate orbit at one stage there, Ben. He's a bit of a fussy referee, this European. Yeah, I think Ben should be thankful for that. His legs still look a little bit unsteady. We'll see if he can get any leaders. That's better. He has to get his body back forward and get some punches off. There's the old Dark Destroyer now getting back to his fighting days. Both these fellas actually were amateur champions of their own country. You'd never believe it the way they're waiting in here. They're not trying to baffle each other with science at the moment. It's soft. This looks better for Ben. He's managing to get body weight forward, get some power into the punches. But McClellan even looks smooth when he's backing off. See, people always say, and quite rightly, he's a great puncher, but the fellow can box a bit. That was a good shot from Ben. That was a good left hook. That's exactly what he needs. Get some confidence back into that mind. This is some comeback in the second round, isn't it? He's complaining about a rabbit blow there on the back of the neck, McClellan. A good right hand from Ben. See, McClellan does not have a great defence. Ben has to go looking and try to make the chances. He had these fights, Jim McClellan, with two of them with Julian Jackson like this, and he came out on top in explosive starts like this. Well, Reggie, he does have a good chin, but he does not have a good defence. And he's missing now, Ben getting under the shots. Crowd roaring now for Ben. That's that's some comeback. It looked all over, didn't it? Another good right hand. Ben is getting punches through now, and he's shaking McClellan up. McClellan, no defence. He's done it before as the underdog. Remember the Aram Barkley fight that we covered on ITV, Jim and Doug DeWitt. They were favourites to lick him. McClellan is looking a little bit sloppy in this round, Reg. As though he felt the fight was over. We don't know anything about stamina, actually, McClellan, because he's never had to go the full distance. Well, it looks as though he's definitely got himself together now, doesn't it, Ben? Another perfect left hook from Ben. Well, they said it was going to be explosive, yes, a wild two, but does that matter? The, the crowd are really going for this one, and I'm sure you are at home. We've got some sweaty palms around here now, fidgeting around the ringside, and people wondering what, exactly what's going to happen now, which one is going to go first. What an atmosphere it is. 
Roberts here. Now he'll come back now. Well, there was in that opening round, it looked as though Ben had more chance of surviving a firing squad than he did McClellan, but he's got over it and he had a good second round. And as Jim Watt was saying, it, he looked a little bit defensively sloppy there, McClellan. See, Ben is ducking low as he comes forward, and that's working. McClellan has not landed a decent punch in the second round, and he can't solve this low style of Ben's out. And Ben's come out of the crouch, and he's landing the shots. Ben has found the, found the perfect answer to McClellan's style. Keep his own chin low and come up from the crouch with hooks. And he's doing all the things that he promised as well, Ben. McClellan is actually trying to turn boxer here. Well, if he didn't have any respect for him before the fight, he's got it now. That's a good right hand. Yeah, he's got, he's got, he's got some length in those punches, Jim, too, McClellan. He can hurt from a distance punch. But Ben's tactics are perfect in the second round and the way he started the third tier. Well, he certainly gained McClellan's respect for the punches that he landed in the second round. And old Frank Bruno's up there giving Nigel all the support he needs. He stood up to shout out there. I think he's uh, had more sweat watching this fight than he could certainly work up against somebody called uh, Matty in the chapter Mallet last week. But this fight has certainly made up for it, even if it ends now. Who would have thought in the first round that Ben would have McClellan backing off in the third? Unbelievable. Ben's head just a little bit high that time when he when he keeps it low, bobs and weaves as he goes forward, he's keeping out of trouble. Oh, he's hit him with that uppercut there. Suddenly McClellan has to think of it defense. Yeah, and turn to Southpaw then, Jim, to try and put him off a bit. See, these first round wins that he's had so many of them now, McClellan, it looks like, well, I think recedes like success if you, because he's got overconfident. But he's still he's there all day. Those... Took followed by a good right hand. Yeah, that, that long right hand I just said to you, that's the one he hurts with that as well. That's the big difference between the two the impact of the punches when they land. McClellan's punches are hurting, but Ben's not really getting the, the same impact. Oh, they're hurting all right, but uh, not getting him over. And he's come back a lot better in this round. And we're in round four. And certainly the old. Roll Fusilier here is showing all the five in spirit and he's mustered the will both to revive body and spirit after that what could have been a disastrous opener there for Ben. And Mr. McClellan certainly not looking the, the three to one on chance. Well, Ben just wants to keep that head low as he goes forward and come out of the crouch with either right or left hooks. That's what's been working for him in the second and third rounds. He has to keep coming forward, he can't allow McClellan to back him up. McClellan has never been beyond the eighth round, actually, Jim. Not completed 12, obviously, and Ben has four times, but I'm, I would still be surprised if it goes that far. We're only in the fourth round. A super middleweight championship, 12 stone. And McClellan came at 11-11, Ben at 12 stone. Well, Ben has having no trouble getting the punches home, Reg. McClellan's defence is very sloppy. And he's certainly given it the, the old blaster that we saw in the early days of uh, Ben's career when he was really knocking them over, what he used to call the Mexican road sweepers. But this fellow's a long way from that. McClellan still hasn't solved out Ben's style. He's been missing with that straight, long right, and he's not coming back with a left hook, so Ben is keeping out of trouble. And 
remember he was a former WBO and WBC middleweight champion, McClellan, he vacated this those championship to come up into the higher division. I think Ben has shocked McClellan with his punching power and his heart. He's hanging on for hanging dear on. life there, absolutely. It was like, it was like a, a sailor there, Jim, in a storm, you know, clinging onto the mast, he wouldn't let go of it. All right, it might be a bit scrappy, though. I say they're not battling each other with science particularly, but it's it's absolutely thrilling stuff, and the, the, the East Enders here are really lapping it up. Now, they just whisked past it there, Jim. The crowd thought they landed, but the, the second punch didn't. But the main thing is, Ben's the one exerting the pressure, still pushing McClellan back. See, then he missed again with the right hand, McClellan, but didn't come back with the left hook. I mean, basic boxing tells you you miss with the right, come back with the left hook. In this pace alone, Reg, something has got to give. I think we heard him saying the other guy's running out of ideas, which is very possible. First time he's been with a new trainer, Kevin Saunders. And it's coming up for him. As you say, Jim, very few of them get McClellan on this back foot moving off like this. McClellan is used to bullying people, Reg, and he's not doing that quite the opposite. Ben is beginning to bully him, pushing him back, not allowing him the leverage in his punches. Right hand again from Ben. He's still lethal, though, Jim. I mean, Julian Jackson was a real hard puncher, ask Harold Graham, and uh, McClellan caught up with him in the fifth round. But, Reg, he's not looking sharp in his movements or in his punching. No, I agree with that. I think it's... At the moment, it looks like being Ben's fight. Can you believe this? And there's, Ben's ahead there's a the scorecard. My card. Well, ben. actually, McGregor's got him the other way around, but it's whichever way you want to pick there, Jim. No, I think Ben's what rate and his cleaner punching has got him in front. McClellan's been jabbing and trying to keep him off balance. I like Ben's work far better. Oh, what a that shot! That's a shaky one. one. Turn to Southpaw again, you see. He's liable to confuse himself as well there, McClellan. It shows a little touch of desperation there. I think he's a bit shocked that this fellow's got a heart as big as a lion anyway, hasn't he? He's worked himself into good shape here, good mental shape. Fired up here, Ben. We've seen him come through a few of these in the past. McClellan's looking a little bit more composed in this round. Still no defence, he's very, very reckless, but looking a bit more composed. Almost losing the gumshoe there, as though he's spitting it out, McClellan. Frank standing up, there he is, see? I should imagine with his voice he could hear, he could hear him all right, Ben. Be ben just beginning to feel the pace a little bit. He's throwing a lot of shots, Reg, missed with a lot. And I think the pace is beginning to tell on him now. A long time since I've seen Frank Bruno more excited than this, and I hope you all are. I wonder why he's leaving it out of his mouth, the gum shoe like that. I think the referee's entitled to come and put it back. It's obligatory. Oh, there it goes again. It could be a breathing problem, Reg. I don't know. I mean, I've never seen a fighter doing that with a gum shield voluntarily. Maybe breathing problems. Maybe he's really gasping for air there. This really is a pace. Well, we had a build-up for this fight to say it was exclusive and uh, explosive. And I doubt whether people believed us. So, Gary, I think, has got Nassim over there. Let's see what he has to say. 
Naz, I don't know how Ben got back into the fight, but what a fight, and he looks like he's going to win it now. It's a great fight for Nigel now, I can see him taking him out, believe me. Two more rounds, Nigel's looking the stronger fighter now. He's took the punishment, he's coming back with war, he's coming back with punches. McClellan really isn't used to this sort of fight, he gets him over quickly. Do you think this is now going to be in Nigel's advantage? I mean, definitely this is Nigel's advantage because, I mean, he's blowing himself out, basically. He's, he's throwing all the punches, all the bombs he can. Believe me, it's Nigel's night now. Let's get it on, Nigel. Are you, like the rest of the country, surprised that Nigel's doing so well? I wasn't surprised because I said to people there might be an upset. As soon as I got into your place, I felt there might be an upset tonight because Nigel, once he starts knocking, knocking good shots out, Nigel takes him out. Thanks. Well, there it is, and you can see Naz in action next week on ITV from Edinburgh. So round six. Looking at those points there, Jim, perhaps Barry McGuigan gave it the two-pointer in that opening round from the knockdown. And that was... Uh, yeah, that was just about swing yeah, it. Yeah, we just about swing it. But, uh, all right, well, let's call it level, but I, I would have leaned now a bit to Ben on the scores. But what I noticed, Red, there was an awful lot more care and attention in McClellan's boxing in the fifth round there. He's gained Ben's respect. He knows it's going a lot longer than they, respect, they expected, and he needs some steam. He needs to look after his team. So he's ben got him level now, Jim, and the unofficial. Three judges, Switzerland, Thailand, Mexico, if ruled upon. I think they might have a superfluous job still. Long way to go yet. I just think, Reg, with the pace that they're setting, someone has got to go physically, even if they're not knocked out. Sheer exhaustion could decide this fight. Ben has always said if he takes him a few rounds, he really fancied the job, because there is some doubt, really, about the Pelham's uh, staying power. But it's never really been proved. That... On the other hand, uh, you know, if, once he gets past the eighth round, it's unknown territory. But Ben's still not allowing McClellan to settle. And this is what he must do. Go making the chances, push him back as much as possible. No, they're not getting through those punches. They might look from the back of the hall, but they will... he was ducking and diving as if, to use a Bruno expression, quite well. As long as Ben stays low, he's normally out of trouble. It's when he leans back, he's taking severe chances. He's almost calling him on there, isn't he, Ben? Do you notice that? Yes, it's, it's looking over to the corner saying, don't worry, I'm OK, I'm in charge, I've got it here. Came in with a new hairstyle, he's had the old woolly hat on concealing that from us at press conferences. Slipped on the, on the wet there in Ben's corner, McClellan. Reg, I think we can rate this already as Ben's greatest ever performance to come off the floor in the first round the way he did and come back in and actually take control of things the way he's doing here. Against the fighter of this calibre, proven. And three defences of his championship at middleweight, McClellan. And a Don King favourite. He was certainly looking for him to win. Ben's legs looking very tired now, Ridge. The fella's still just looking a little bit more composed, but he's still being pushed back. There goes goes the the field, yeah, we, not surprised. We've been talking about that. That was a racing certainty. He's the only bet of the night. I'd have liked that one that it would come out. And a couple after the bell as well. He's hurt there. And I think Ben knew it. And just took the... And now, well, that's it. Well done, mate. Yeah. <laughs> he bowed to the Frenchman there. A bit of Euros. I think we should get him on the, on the pol pol politics, Jim. I'll get the word out in a minute, I'm so excited with the rest of you. The old-fashioned sawdust bowl, we got the lot here. Well, you would in the old East End, wouldn't you? So there's the gun shield coming out, Jim, in replay. Well, not surprised, it's been half out for most of the fight. Good left to it. The only slight problem for Ben, his punches are not having the, the effect you would like to see in McClellan. He's landing good shots, he's landing far better shots. Here's Big Frank and caught up in the, the atmosphere and, and the excitement. But uh, he's landing better punches than McClellan, but they're not having the desired effect. Good rub down there with Sanders and Mancini and Detraitus. They must be pleased with the, their man's night's work. Uh, character there in McClellan's corner called Hyacinth with turnip speed. Well, American fight games are Klondike for characters anyway. 
Well, for sheer excitement, Reg, this one rates with any of the fights I've ever seen in all my years in the fight game. Yeah, we're not, we're not worried about the technical side here too much, Jim, are we? They're both such competent boxers, but they're not bothering with that. They're just throwing bombs at each other. Ben Whoop, shaking back with that head. shot. Yeah, he's hit on the back of the head. See, McClellan he, standing off a little bit, giving himself room to punch. Ben has to get closer. He loves what he calls a tear-up, Ben, doesn't he? He promised us he would. Oh. Ben has to get closer. He's given McClellan punching room here. McClellan's getting a bit irritated as well by the referee getting in there when he thinks he could be unloading punches. And now Danny Manzini's screaming in the corner and Sanders. This referee could ruin a good fight, Reg. He wants to get out of there, but he decides that's a low punch. He's given Ben some time to recover. It's been such a fight and such ferocity in the blows, Jim, that it's a noticeable now just not cruise mode by any means, but by their standards now, a little bit slower, isn't it? Well, Leg-wise, anyway. McLaren is finding a little bit of punching room here. This is better. Ben has to march straight up with that crouch and punch as he comes out of the crouch. But if he stands within punching range, this fellow's going to take over. Just a point about this gum shield. If it went out among the crowd and nobody could find it, if McClellan's corner didn't have a spare, they would actually be disqualified under the new rules. It's an overhand right again, landing for Ben, but once again, not the effect we'd like to see. He left it from Ben. He's, he's really doing the come on, mate. Anything you can do, I can do better stuff, Ben. Got himself in a great shape. At 31, it's, it's no chicken in the fight game at this weight. That shield will come out again, Jim. I don't know whether it's, it's got to be the breathing problem. Maybe his nose is busted. Yeah, I think it's trouble with his breathing. I don't think his nose is busted. I just think it's been the pace of the action. The lungs are craving for more oxygen and he's got to open his mouth. That left hook missed. A good shot from Ben, just missed the whisker. See, McClellan's still trying to get a bit more composure into his work. I saw him in a spa session once with Tommy Hearns in the front gym in Detroit and they got applause, can you imagine that, and a workout? That was a tremendous left hook from Ben. Again, when he was in trouble himself, that one really shook McClellan. Barry McGuigan. McClellan has never gone past eight rounds. Surely it's going to be a matter of fitness. This pace has been terrific. Well, Nigel's uh, lateral movement have given him real problems. He loaded up throughout this fight, and they're starting to take his toll on him. He's very fatigued. He looks a lot more tired than Nigel does, but this is all down to who wants it the most, who's the fittest. There's always a risk with Nigel that he could just get tagged. Well, there is the risk. But he's finding McClellan much easier to hit now, and also McClellan's finding him more difficult to hit. If McClellan worked the body, he could probably have more success, but he's too tired to be able to think like that. Looking at those two there, McClellan looks the one distressed. No doubt about that, and he's more worried than Ben is at this stage. And working there in McClellan's corner, Ralph Citro, great record compiler in America, and one of the most experienced of the cut men. So, round eight. I think Barry McGuigan's got it about level. I've got Ben one up, Jim. Have you? Yeah, I've got Ben one up too, just in sheer work rate. Although Here. McClellan was a lot more composed. Yes, he has got it. The previous round. It's still that two point in the in the opening round, probably. That uh, maybe people think that Ben's a little bit farther ahead. But remember that the judges have to deduct that. The only thing that worries me in the whole fight is the fact that Ben's getting home with good shots, but they're not troubling McClellan. And in a 12-round fight, that is a severe problem. See, you hear McClellan's strength beginning to take over. If McClellan starts <laughs> at backing Nigel up, then we are, we're going to see some serious trouble for Ben. Yeah, now Don King standing up there to oppose Bruno. Who knows? He might even be the next opponent. He's had some like him. Ben's too tired now to think about tactics. It's just sheer heart, the sheer warrior's heart that's keeping him going now. But he must try to keep his body weight forward, keep pushing this fellow back if he can do it. He's 
still not getting out of the way of punches, McClellan, but I tell you what, Jim, you, you can't question his heart either. He's taking some tough shots. Well, but Ben should be the one that's the happier of the two. I think McClellan and his people must have thought they'd be shipping, uh, sipping champagne already. They would not have believed Nigel Ben would still be here. No, they obviously are, turned out to be a bit complacent. Huh? He's actually not managed by... Well, that was a good right-hand lead from McClellan. Not managed by Don King anymore, by the way. But King, he's under the King umbrella, as they say, in a promotional sense. Oh, good right-hand again from McClellan. Oh, he's Pain done in trouble. He's in trouble in the eighth round here. He rolled back from that punch and he was hurt, Ben. Right above us here, Jim. Look at that. There he goes again. The wounded lion bit again, but he's, he's bang in trouble here. Legs of that dredge. He's Finish got to get out of that corner, Jim. He's got to get out of that corner and he won't. But he doesn't mind being in the corner. That was the own impetus of missing with the punch. He's, he's got to count there, the referee. Ben was actually stumbling to the floor of his own accord. Yeah, I know he was. Punch landed, so the referee has to call it Exactly. Oh, dear, that's, that's put him back on the point schedule anyway. Again, Ben comes back with that left hook. Right hand from Ben. Well, we, we, you know, we kept promoting this uh, this fight as being explosive, but I tell you what, we didn't promote it enough. One explosive, of the fights, Reg, even better than we anticipated. Yeah. Punishing, grueling, and I'm hoping now for his sake, Nigel Ben, that uh, that round didn't take too much out of him. Uh, and there's a rundown, as I said earlier, with the corner men. But a little, little bruise under Ben's eye has been taken care of OK. And there you are, that's the other side. With the, the trainer there as well. Let's have another look at that, Jim. Well, once again, it's only the sheer heart, courage of Nigel Ben that kept him in the fight. These were the bombs that knocked out Julian Jackson and all the rest on McLaren's record, but Ben has taken them and actually come back with good shots of his own. Tremendous show of courage. This is where his legs actually dipped as though it was all over, and he seemed to stumble forward. I think Ben seven. threw a punch, missed, and he was stumbling. He was going over to the floor of his own accord. Seconds out. See that one? He was nine. falling over, but the punch just sent him over, so the referee had to count. Yeah, but I don't think McLaren can believe... Oh, tremendous punch. But Ben's still there. First time he got into a ninth round in his life, McClellan. See, Ben's tiring now, Reg, and his chin is up a bit higher. He's trying to get his hands up there. They must have warned him the cornermen there. Tuck the chin down a bit. You're taking chances. As soon as the fighter's tired, Reg, up comes the chin. That's what's happening to Ben, and that's what's getting him in trouble. Actually, McClellan, Jim's just giving that little breather that Ben needs. McClellan is still trying to keep some composure in his boxing. Ben has to drive, he has to do it for everything from his heart. Oh, he's trying to measure him with that right hand. You watch that. There it is. Just a bit too long. There's nothing at all wrong with Gerald McClellan's courage or his chin. He's taken some real shots from Ben. Yeah, there's the unofficial there by, by Barry, who's got him two points in front. Those knockdowns have done that. <laughs> I tell you what, he can cancel out all the arrears any, any time there once he throws the right leather. He may not travel very far, his punches, but I tell you what, McClellan gets the message. Just puffed under both eyes. A thumb in the eye, I think, from McClellan. Oh, he's yeah, complaining a little he's bit. complaining there. Not happy, not happy. No, he's caught his head, he caught him with his head. Yeah. Oh, now, the crowd don't like this. Penny Manzini screaming at the referee, make him fight on. This is good news for Ben. This is good news for Ben. McClellan doesn't like it. Well, Ben always said, if he gets in a distance with this guy, we'll find out if he's got it. Well, big question mark hangs over McClellan now, Reg. And clashes yeah. of heads are just expected in boxing. You take them and go on with the job. Lack of professionalism there from Gerald McClellan. 
Just rushing in, Ben. It wasn't sort of stand off deliberate butt or head of ball or something. Ben still doing what you said, the best thing, Jim, early on, that he keeps ducking below a lot of punches. Yes, of he course he's getting caught with plenty. Catellan's strength is not in his uppercuts, it's in his straight punches and his hooks. So if Ben keeps his chin low, he has very little to fear. McClellan does not use uppercuts very often. to tuck the gum shield back in there too, McClellan, at the end of the night. Well, WBC Super Middleweight Championship. They're the two of the quarter men, and, uh, as I say, added to that highest interest, turn up speed. There's a name for you. So that little, what I call the, the doll's house arm, is actually called an end swell that they push against the eye, which is iced up. Let's have a look at this. Well, in that round that the courage was showing, I mean, that was just a stumble from Ben. It didn't even look to me as though the heads collided. I thought he was actually complaining about a thumb. Yes, yeah. they actually did. Yes, they Yeah, but it was, a, it, you know, it wasn't a butt by any means. He fell. Wait, what? But now listen, they are swallowing it that round. Don't forget the jab. Book, book. Come on now. Three rounds to go. Come on. We'll be the champion of champions. Come on. Well, there it is. It's a bit like having Lester Pigger on a classic horse when old Danny Van Steeny starts shouting at them and getting them home in the last furlong of a fight. Tenth round of this scheduled 12 at the 12 stone division. And the seventh defence here by Nigel Ben, a former light middleweight champion as well. Ben's actually looking better here than he was two rounds ago. He's got his confidence back again, showing a little faint. Pushing McClellan back, that was a good job for McClellan. He's blinking a lot, isn't he, Jim? You notice that McClellan on the way back? Maybe a mannerism, but I doubt it. I've never noticed it before in his fights that I've seen. Well, there it is again. He's, he's still got him a couple of points. Just now what the Swiss, Thailand and Mexico judges think. Referee from France doesn't vote. You saw that punch coming, the crowd must have seen it coming, they're on their feet. Gerald McClellan didn't see it now, he's got to get up at the eight. There's no three knockdown rule, as we told you earlier, that if one man goes down in three rounds, three Bad signs times. here from McClellan, Reg. He almost swallowed in the previous round. This is bad, great signs for Nigel Benn. This is, a, this is all heart is won in this fight, Jimmy. He's punching McClellan And he's going to do it. He's going to stop him, I tell you that now. This fella doesn't like it the way he's going down. Of course, you're not going to enjoy being hit. But Jim Watt and I, when they go down like that, and he's shaking his head, he's going to count him out, isn't he? He's going to count he's him quit, out, Jim. He's quit, He's done him, he's quit. What a fantastic performance. This ring is going to be like the London Underground in the rush hour. Crazy time. What a result for Nigel Ben, and he deserves it. Fought brilliantly, courageously. He's still the world he's DC super middleweight champion. Well, it's a long time since we've had excitement like this at a British fight. Now, the now these are the questions that Nigel was saying. If this guy goes long in the fight, I guarantee I'll stop him. And he knew what he was talking about. Well, tremendous performance. Even if Ben hadn't won tonight, it was going to go down. It's his career best performance. Just his sheer courage and the technique and, and the, the, the tactics in his battle. But he's won the fight. He's punched the life right out of Jerry McClellan, the most dangerous man on the planet. And Nigel Ben is still a WBC Super Middleweight Champion. And that's the border control doctor there in the corner with Jerry McClellan. Just making sure that he's OK. And we're still not sure. I mean, obviously, the punches do it. We're not hiding that. But there seemed to be another reason, Jim. I said to you seconds before, he's blinking heavily. I haven't seen that before. Now, I think it was a heart problem, Reg. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doubting McClellan's courage, but he decided he would... The first time he went on the floor, it was the same punches that's been taken all night long. But suddenly the chin could still take the punches, but the heart could not. Down he went, head as clear as a bell, eyes as clear as a bell, nothing wrong with him. 
apart from the, the fact that that punch in the jaw had an effect on his heart. We can't question the man's courage with the punches he's taken leading up to this particular round, but Nigel Benn has just punched the fight right out of Gerald McClellan here. In the fight trade, this is one of the biggest upsets for many years, I promise you that. Well, especially the start Ben had, there have been very few fighters who have come back, but is it a case of, once again, of the bully, when, when the tables are turned, it's not used to taking the punishment and can't do it, but what a tremendous performance and a tremendous finish from see Once again, not a devastating knockdown. McClellan has decided to go on the floor, looked at the referee and just stayed there. So, in effect, it's actually a retirement from Gerald McClellan. He, on his knees to the finish, see Ben still plenty of heart, plenty of fight. Everything Ben has, he dishes out, never quits. But here we see Gerald McClellan actually quitting. Well, that's what they call punching the life out of you. And he's lying on the floor now, McClellan, Jim. Now he's got to get the stewards and the sec security boys have got to get everybody out of the way. That's the Board of Control doctor there. I think this could be exhaustion with the regular of dehydration. I don't well, think it's the punches that he's so. taken. But they'll certainly take well, him off the hospital overnight. Oh, absolutely. Well, let's hope he's going to be OK. Ben doesn't realise it yet, by the way, while he's doing this, and I'm sure that at least he would go over there. But we're nearly, we're nearly ready, I think, for Gary to try and get hold of him now and explain what's happening. Over to Gary. Yeah. Nigel, that not only was your greatest ever performance, that was one of the great boxing performances of all time in this country. Yeah, well, everyone, all you lot were cheering him up, giving it this, giving it there. I knew he wouldn't be able to go the distance. I know. Yeah. Nigel. No, no, you listen to me. I'd like to thank my trainer, Kevin Saunders. Everyone's saying, oh, we ain't going nowhere about Jimmy Tim. Proved it wrong. And not only that, the person I'd like to thank most of all is Paul McKenna, who hypnotised me and made me believe in myself. I don't care what I know. You listen to me. I'm always listening yeah, to you. Can I, listen? No. Can I talk McKenna. about the fight? Because it was yeah, a fabulous okay. performance, Nigel. Okay. In the first round... And thanks to my man, uh, Peter Fight McCallum is very badly hurt, actually. I've got a stretcher in here, Nigel. Uh, McClellan, sorry, no, Mike yeah, McClellan yeah, is very badly hurt. So let's just move away gone. a second to give Mike a bit of a chance. Nigel, Nigel, in the first round, Gerald McClellan, sorry, getting confused here. Uh, in the first round, actually, I had to, I had to help push you back in there. I had to help push you back in there. The first round, you're in a lot of trouble. Daly brought them over here to bash me out, mate. Let me tell you that now. I'm saying what I want to say. Daly brought in there to try and bash me out, mate. No, Frank, no chance. Bill Kelsey, can you just get no out of the way chance. so we can see? Can I just, Nigel, talk about that performance? It was sheer guts on your part to get back in after the first round. I don't care if he knocked me down, I was ready to go with him. Whatever he wanted to do, I was ready to match him. All the way, mate, all the way. Now, now you might start believing in the Dark Destroyer. Start believing I'm number one, second to no one. The other person I'd like to... Made a believer out of me. Okay. We're going to wrap this interview because we have a serious problem in the ring here, Jim, with Gerald McClellan. We have a serious problem with Jim McClellan. Jim Rosenthal. Yes, of course, that is a very worrying aspect of this fight. Gerald McClellan continues to receive attention in the ring there and we of course and everybody here I'm sure can only hope that the challenger makes a complete recovery we have a program just after midnight tonight and of course we will give you the very latest details on the situation here we all hope Gerald McClellan will be fully recovered by then but what a performance by this man, Nigel Benn, and that is a very worrying sight indeed. And a concern spreading around this arena. Really, it's been wonderful performance by this fella. You can't take it away from him. What Nigel Benn has done here tonight, he has proved everybody wrong. And he has done it, showing unbelievable fighting heart. And of course, we're back 
after midnight tonight. Lloyd Hunnigan, the old ragamuffin man, in against Adrian Dodson, unbeaten tonight at 12.05. And there's a competition as well. That's next Saturday, Prince Nassim Hamed. Next Saturday, 10 o'clock, here on ITV. He's done it. Nigel Benn. What a fight. Bye-bye.